even if you don't use them, I think we can all agree that rolling releases are pretty cool. But it's not the main reason why I use Arch Linux. The main reason is the AUR, because applications are being made every single day, and a distro can't package everything that is being made. So if something has, you know, five or ten users, let the users package it. Now this concept doesn't only exist on Arch. There is also a similar system over on Fedora called the Fedora Copper. Now I'm not even memeing. Copper stands for Cool Other Package Repo, and I can appreciate that name. Now, it's definitely not a carbon copy of the AUR. In fact, in many ways, it actually works very differently. So the way that I would describe it is sort of as a mix between Ubuntu's PPAs, Arch's AUR, and then some build tooling thrown in basically for good measure. So on Arch Linux with the AUR, it's mostly separate from Pac-Man, the package tool on that distro. You can uninstall stuff, but you can't install packages, which is the main thing you want to do from a package repo. But all of the packages are in one location. The AUR has a website, and so does Copper. It does the job, it's not the fastest website, but it is what it is. Now, with PPAs, PPAs integrate really nicely into Apt. So you enable the repo, and then you can install from it, you know, basically like anything else. You need to say it is a PPA, but it integrates with that built-in tooling. But PPAs are also spread out all across the internet. The AUR has a website, and so does Copper. It's definitely not the fastest website out there, but it absolutely does the job. Now, what it takes from PPAs is actually integrating well into your standard tooling. So rather than needing some like extra tool to go and install stuff, with Copper, I'll show you this a bit later, you can just enable the repo and install like you'd install anything else with DNF. As for the build tooling, it will actually go and build the packages for you. And if we go to just some random package, let's say this one right here. And as I said, it is kind of slow to load everything. We go to the build section. We can actually see like when builds were done, whether they were successful, whether they failed. And there's also this nice little key down the bottom here, basically telling you what the state of everything in that project is going to be. So unlike the AUR, no more downloading random packages that don't compile because they've already been compiled and it should theoretically be working. But if for whatever reason things aren't working or you need to get in contact with the maintainer, there is going to be a comment section on every single project. So if we click on start discussion here, it's going to take us over to the general forum interface you see for a lot of Linux distros. So Copper has been around for a couple of years at this point, and right now contains about 19,000 packages. This might sound like a lot, but in comparison to the AUR, the AUR has about four times the amount of packages. So when you're looking for relatively obscure projects, you are going to be far more likely to find it over on the AUR. But this is a problem that's going to be addressed with, you know, more time and more users. It's not inherently a problem with copper. Also, much like the AUR and much like PPAs, there's no guarantee that when you download a project, it is going to be the latest version of the project. So maybe the maintainer just isn't working on it anymore. It still works on your distro, but over time, it's just slowly getting more and more out of date. This is slightly better handled over on the AUR because when something is out of date, it's going to have a marker on the web interface to say, hey, this is out of date. All this time, I've been referring to projects rather than individual packages, and the reason for this is this is the way the repo is actually sorted. Now, generally, those mean the same thing. So for something like Hugo, for example, Hugo is going to be a project that contains a single package, but there are plenty of projects out there that do contain multiple packages. Say, for example, this one, which has GNOME Shell Extension, PaperWM, Helm, and XKey Snail. Basically, for I guess you would say meta packages or package groups. Now, due to the way that Fedora works, the way that it's not just a single thing, there are multiple different versions of Fedora. You have things like Fedora 35, you have things like Fedora 36, and plenty of other releases that are based around Fedora. Most of these packages don't just have a single release. So for example, with Hugo, 
There is a CentOS Stream 9 version, a EPL 9 version, and a Fedora 36 version. So if your specific distro doesn't have a release, then you're not actually going to be able to install it on that distro. And you need these because these different distros and different distro versions may not necessarily have the same package versions available. And if one of those packages is a dependency of this project, then it needs to be packaged slightly differently to make sure it's going to work there. So let's say when the next version of Fedora comes out, all of the packages are going to be made around the previous version of Fedora. So you're going to have to wait for those packages to be updated to the new version, and hopefully they do get updated because a lot of them, maybe their maintainer is no longer using Fedora anymore, and it's basically been abandoned. I've also been calling Copper a repo, but it's not a repo in the traditional Linux sense. It is not a package repository. What it is, is a repository repository, which probably makes no sense, but let's go over how you actually use it. So let's say I want to install something like Hugo, for example. This is going to work in both DNF and yum directly. It's going to be slightly different in yum, and I'll go over both of them. So over here, I have Fedora 36 Workstation. The first thing we need to do if I've never installed anything from Copper is ensure we have one package installed. That package being dnf-plugins-core. Now you're probably going to have it installed, but it's always a good idea to just make sure everything's good. Then what we need to do is run dnf copper, enable, and then find out what the actual name of the project is. In this case, it is kevnc slash hugo. So if I go and enable kevnc slash hugo, now we're able to actually go and install it. Firstly, though, it's going to give us this big warning text saying, hey, are you sure this is what you want to do? We don't actually control everything going on here. There may be problems here. There may be bugs. It's not our problem to deal with. Send it to the maintainer. In this case, I'm going to say yes, and now it's going to be enabled. And in Yum's case, it's pretty much the exact same thing. The only difference really is you're using a slightly different plugin. So what you need to install is yum-plugin-copper, and then for enabling the repo, it's the exact same command. You do yum, copper, enable, and then the name of the project. There is a third option. I just don't recommend using it. So over on the copper website, you can see that you can actually download these repos. You can download the repo and then place it in slash Etsy slash yum.repos.d. You don't want to do that though, because running it like this is just going to handle it automatically. And then from there, it works basically like installing anything else. So in the Hugo project, there is one package, that package being the Hugo package. So if we go and run sudo dnf install and then Hugo, it's going to look for it. Okay, it's going to ask for my password. It's going to look for it. It's found it's in a copper repo. It's going to go through the process saying, okay, let's grab the repo. Is this what you want to install? This is what also needs to be installed as a dependency. I'm going to say yes. It's then going to go and download it, and once that's downloaded, which is going to take a little bit of time, it's going to basically prompt us with the key, saying, is this all good? Are you certain you want to do this? And once we say yes, pretty much, it's going to just go ahead and install it. It's a very seamless process. If you installed a version of Fedora that had a bunch of copper repos enabled, you wouldn't really know they were enabled, except for the fact that it says copper when you're actually trying to install the package. So this is where it is similar to PPAs. So it is a repository of repositories. Every single project is its own repo. But unlike Ubuntu PPAs, you know where they all are, so you can actually effectively use them. However, there are some kind of annoying problems. First of those being, not every single project on copper has a link to the upstream project. So when they do, there is going to be this homepage button, which is kind of easy to miss. And I didn't realize it was here until a couple of minutes ago, but projects like BTOP, for example, don't have a link. So unless you know exactly what this project is, you have no idea what you're downloading. Also, it's really weird about how it handles empty descriptions and empty install instructions. So BTOP being a one of those, Description not filled in by author. Very likely personal repository for testing purpose, which you should not use. Instructions not filled in by author. 
author knows what to do, everybody else should avoid this repo. First thing you probably notice there is unlike the AUR where you're not allowed to make personal packages unless other people are going to be using them, on Copper, you are allowed to do that, especially if it's the case where you're trying to learn how Copper actually works. But the way these descriptions are handled by default makes it seem, you know, a lot more dangerous than it actually is. BSOP, for example, works exactly like it should. There is nothing wrong with the package, but it doesn't seem like it should be working to someone just browsing through Copper. I don't have an example on hand, but packages can also be marked as temporary. This is a good idea if it's a testing package, but if it's a package that people are actually using and is marked as temporary, it's going to be deleted from the repo. So I don't know how I feel about that existing. If it's used the way it should be, that's great. But I don't know if the enforcement is actually at the level it should be. One thing I'm not going into today is making a package and then putting it on copper. I will leave a link to the Fedora documentation in the description down below. So if you want to know how to do so, go ahead and have a read. Maybe I'll do a video on that in the future, but for now, I'll leave that up to you. So right now, I'm happy where I am. I am happy on Arch. But maybe there will come a time where copper gains enough traction where I might actually consider becoming a Fedora user. I have no idea what's going to happen in the future. We'll just, you know, wait and see. But for now, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of Copper, if you're already using it, or if you're, you know, just discovering it right now. I would love to know. So if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, selling bear, pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.